is home to three native subspecies of cutthroat, the Colorado River, the Rio Grande, and the Greenback Cutthroat. And over the next three days, we will be chasing down the rare and beautiful Greenback Cutthroat Trout. The Greenback is thought to be first recorded in 1857 by U.S. Army Surgeon General William A. Hammond during the Indian Wars, although the fish was already known by the native inhabitants of the land long before this. The greenback would soon be declared extinct as fast as 1930 due to habitat loss, mining, and overfishing. This was until a small population was found in Rocky Mountain National Park in 1957. With more populations found in the years to come, efforts were made in the coming years to restore the subspecies to a fraction of its original range. Thankfully, populations of the greenback cutthroat have continued to grow and the species has now been downgraded to threatened, with some areas even allowing take limits on the fish. Although the populations of greenback have been growing, these fish have been almost entirely mixed with their highly similar counterpart, Colorado River cutthroat, and are no longer purebred greenback cutthroat trout. The last remaining population of pure greenback cutthroat were found in Bear Creek, Colorado, and had managed to survive here for 130 years in a four-mile stretch of creek above a natural waterfall. Purebred greenback cutthroat are highly dissimilar from any other cutthroat subspecies and are easily identifiable. In fact, it is now believed that the fish found by William A. Hammond were actually Rio Grande cutthroat and not greenbacks due to their highly debated original range. Most greenback cutthroats found outside of their natural range are hybrids or stocked. The current threats to greenback populations are water diversion, competition with non-native species, and hybridization. Hybridization is an interesting and peculiar threat. It is relatively common to find multiple subspecies of cutthroat in these alpine streams and lakes due to years of stocking, restoration efforts, and illegal introduction of other fish. Although considered by many to be a rare find, it is extremely common to catch rainbow trout cutthroat hybrids and Colorado River greenback hybrids in these waters. In fact, if anything is rare these days, it is finding a pure greenback cutthroat, and this also goes for the more common but still in potential danger Colorado River cutthroat, which was petitioned to be put on the endangered species list, but this will be a video of its own later. One of the key telltale signs of a greenback cutthroat is the large oval-shaped faded spots on its sides and the fish's olive to bright green backs with signature red marks running down its jaw. These fish spawn in the spring and summertime coinciding with rainbow trout and other cutthroat subspecies and in these small bodies of alpine water this spells out an abundance of hybrids. Spawning season also means color variations and signature bright red underbellies. These fish can live anywhere from 5 to 10 years depending on the body of water they reside in and grow from 6 to 18 inches. Although there are some outliers, they get absolutely massive sometimes. Lastly, the cutthroat trout is one of Colorado's 55 native fish species and 10% of any profit made off of this video will be donated to Colorado Parks and Wildlife. <clears throat> so it's currently 4 a.m. And we are getting ready to head out to one of the local alpine lakes that supposedly has rainbow trout, greenbacks, and Colorado River cutthroat. We tied some terrestrial patterns last night in advance because there have been dragonflies, hoppers, and all other kinds of malt all over the local banks and rocks and shrubbery. So... We have a good feeling about this, and uh, we think they're going to eat them up.
arduous journey finally here you know I ain't necessarily sponsored by fish pond or nothing but uh, if anyone's watching this hit me up got the fish pond pack fish pond tacky fly holder uh, fish pond magnet thing I am biased or nothing. There's just a quality of gear that stands above the rest, if you ask me. You know, I personally believe that tying on droppers is the hardest thing to do in all of fly fishing, aside from actually catching fish. I will waste damn near infinite amount of tippet just to make that clinch knot loop a little bit bigger so that I don't have to sit here with my glasses on try to make that thing go through. And, and you know, I refuse to, I, I refuse to uh, tie on droppers with five or six X. I, I, I just, I just refuse. It is probably one of the most painful things you can ever do. I always manage to snap them because I got these big old clumsy bear hands. So I'll run my my top fly on five and then I'll run my dropper on three and I know that's making everyone cringe right now. It makes my buddies cringe too but I always catch fish on it never never doesn't work so <laughs> and until until i lose a fish doing doing this uh stupid little strategy i'll probably keep reinforcing this bad habit I would if I wasn't about to get a fish. Oh, damn! That is hilarious, right? Yeah. There's no way that was real. No, it happened. <laughs> Well, lost that one. No! I'm not, I don't think he took it. I also didn't have control of my line, so it's possible.
salsa ahora, mi salsa para bailar, este ritmo tan sabroso, el ritmo para guarachar, yo te canto con sentimiento, mi manana te lo voy a dar, muévese con sabrosura, abre la ventana para respirar. By the end of a very successful trip, we had gotten into quite a few fish and uh, decided to bring one of our buddies along to uh, join in on the fun. There was an active damselfly hatch going on and the fish were absolutely boiling trying to jump out of the water and hit these bad boys. Hey, Matt. After a day at fish, we decided cool, to throw on some blue damselfly patterns and high stick it above the water for fun. And I mean, to our surprise, there was some yep. success, Five just not on the high sticking itself. Thankfully, I always keep a box of random flies on me that catch my eye from time to time and seem like there's a chance that one day I'll run into the perfect situation and they'll turn out useful. I typically get made fun of for having these on me every time I go fishing, but today it paid in dividends. And today we were having a hard time figuring out exactly what they were eating as we were getting way more refusals than is normal. And uh, that's when I noticed one of these guys jumping out of the water trying to hit these damselflies, which was a really cool first for us. And despite seeing videos of it in our mind, um, fish hitting damselflies and dragonflies straight up out of the water was uh, kind of a myth. And crazy enough, our buddy's first fish ever was almost high sticking a damselfly out of the water, so that would have been a pretty legendary story had he pulled it off. By the end of day two, we were pretty tired, and I got caught lacking as the last fish of the day vibe checked my fly and nearly made it out clean. But thanks to my trout-like reflexes and sheer determination to go home with one more fish, he made it to the net. So I believe we caught a couple of nice greenbacks today. I mean, that's a really beautiful fish, and it looks just like the diagram. Now, where it gets confusing is I have talked to some of the subject matter experts in my area. Some report that greenbacks were stocked here a while ago. Some report that they have never been stocked here. Um, but I mean, if it looks like a greenback, swims like a greenback, it's probably a greenback. Uh, it's very distinct from a Colorado River, it's very distinct from a Rio Grande, so at the end of the day, I'm going to call it a success. <clears throat> However, I mean, it is admittedly kind of hard to tell. Um, there's this phenomenon I've come across while researching, fishing, and editing this video and staring at pictures of fish for way longer than I would ever like to. And the phenomenon is, the more you stare at these fish, these subspecies of cutthroat, the more they all kind of just look like the same fish. I mean, at the end of the day, you can only differentiate oval-shaped spots and orange stripes so much before they all just mesh together into the same fish. So yeah, um, successful day, zzz, uh, successful trip, a lot of fun. We're gonna call it.